You're listening to another episode of the Just Go Bike Podcast. That's AKA Murph. And that's AP. And this is the podcast where we talk about cycling just for the fun of it. With tales from all over the nation, come for the bikes, stay for the fun, and leave with a smile. Well, hello, Murph. Well, hello, AP. How are you? I'm fantastic in the Antarctic tundra of Iowa. Yeah, it's literally blizzard warning today. So um, this is crazy. Yep. You get your fat tire bike out there. You get your snowshoes out there. Just enjoy it. Embrace the cold, I say. I agree. Yeah. And I did. I went for a walk this morning and it's um, it's interesting when the snow is so squishy and it's just warm enough that it's not slush, but it's not like hard packed snow. Mm. Um, you really get to work on, you know, those ankle muscles oh, keeping yeah. upright. Yeah, this is cross training season. Cross so. training. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we have a couple of special guests with us. So should we just jump right into our topic today? Yeah. Let's spill the beans. Today, okay. on the t- podcast, we're talking to about Ride the Rockies 2024 because the route has just been announced. And Woo-hoo! today, we're not going to spend too much time talking about the route because that's going to come up in a couple of weeks when we interview Saber Nagel, from, who's the ride director of Ride the Rockies. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a little bit of a different topic for you today, but if you'd like to know the route right now, I encourage you to go to ridetherockies.com or to our Facebook page, Ride the Rockies Fans. Yes. And Ride the Rockies, you know, having the route announced is a pretty big deal to a lot of people because now they'll know where they're going to be going in June and uh, the communities that they'll be going through. And it's kind of an exciting time. It's like the launch of the season, just like with Ragbri. Yeah, that's exactly right. So we could talk about Ride the Rockies all day, but we brought a couple experts on board to help us talk today about Ride the Rockies registration and some of the cool things we have planned for riders uh, along with the ride. So I'd like to introduce to you my colleagues, Erica Detterman. Hi, Erica. Hi, P. Hi, Murph. Erica is the Expo and Registration Manager and all things, everything for Ride the Rockies and Ragbri. So needless to say, she's got a lot of great info for you. And I've also got my other colleague, Peter Indovino, on the line today. Hi, Pete. Hello, hello. How's it going? Great. And Pete is the marketing coordinator for Ride the Rockies. So um, we're so excited to get dig down into a little bit more about Ride the Rockies 2024 with you. And welcome to the podcast, guys. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's fun to have uh, a little bit more of the team on the podcast. We're going to try to do this some more of that in 2024, just because we have a lot of really cool people who work on our podcast. Uh, Ventures Endurance Cycling Team, and I, I want to show them off a little bit. So um, yeah. here we go. Well, will you guys, before we get into the heart of Ride the Rockies, maybe Erica start, tell us a little bit about how you got started with Ride the Rockies. So I joined the team in March of 2022, right after we had just acquired Ride the Rockies. So I got started doing all of the customer service, went on the first ride, which was amazing, and then changed my role slightly. So I handled the expo and all of things registration. So that's what I'll kind of do day to day on the ride is handle all of those things. And how about you, Pete? Yeah, so I started with Ride the Rockies in February as the marketing coordinator. Um, It was great to jump in and kind of get thrown into the mix for last year's event, but it's been even better to kind of get a clean, clean slate and fresh start for this year. It's been really fun getting to plan it from the ground up and not joining in once the route's already planned. So it's been fun going to meet the towns um, and building the route and everything that goes along with it. And a side note, this is a fun fact, but Pete's father, Jay, was on the podcast, was it probably a couple of years ago, right, Pete? Yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll throw... You're stuck with us. <laughs> We'll throw that episode in the show notes, so in case anybody wants to learn more about um, other rides, that's uh, what Jay was talking about. Anyway. Well, and if you have any other relatives who might or probably should be on the podcast, we'll talk about it after the show and we'll get them on there. (laughs) Get the whole family on here. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So I'd like to know, uh, let's start with Pete this time. What's your favorite thing about working for Ride the Rockies? Could be anything. Mm. Mm, That's a great question. 
Um, I would say my favorite part about working for the Rockies is that not every day is the same. I feel like in a lot of jobs, you, you kind of wake up and repeat. Mm. And it's really nice to like wake up and do something a little different every day. Sure, some things are the same, yeah. but being able to engage um, with the communities and and just get, kind of get creative on a day to day basis with with how to mm. how to promote the ride, um, how to b- build fun things into the ride, whether that's um, helping out with the expo and building fun things there or entertainment. But I really love just kind of the the freedom and creativity um, I'm allowed to do on a daily basis. That's probably the number one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Pete and our graphic designer Kim just did a really cool series of videos about while they were doing a route scouting trip recently. Yep. So you'll see some of those in the route announcement and then you'll see some more to come as time goes on a little bit. So just to speak to that creativity every day thing, that was a great point. Yeah. Um, Erica, what do you like to work, do or what's your favorite thing about working for Ride the Rockies? My favorite thing about working for Ride the Rockies is the just seeing the riders at the event, how happy they are and how excited they are to be there and experience what Colorado has to offer because as a lot of the team i'm from iowa so i only really Mm -hmm. get to see beautiful colorado when i'm there for work or vacation so i love being able to go and experience that and then enjoy it with all of the writers yeah Mm -hmm. well said i want to go to andrea even though i'm not like necessarily part of the staff okay (laughs) okay sure uh what is (laughs) your favorite so murph what is your favorite thing about ride the rockies Well, I get to be a part of the Ride the Rockies crew. So uh, my uh, job, I guess you'd say, is only that week of the event. But I just cannot get over the views. And I'm sure people that live in Colorado, maybe they don't get used to. I don't know. Pete, do you get used to seeing beautiful mountains every day? Never. (laughs) Yeah. God, it's just so beautiful. And I also will agree with Erica and just talking to people as they roll in at the end of their day. You know, it's it's a pretty, I don't know if grueling is the right word, but it is a, it's not a, a joy ride. I mean, you're <laughs> doing some major elevation along with seeing all that beauty. So I, I absolutely love being part of the crew and being able to see Colorado in a different way. Yeah. And I guess I'll, I'll take a turn. Um, I agree with all of you. All of your points are really great, and I totally feel that. But I think my favorite part is getting to see all the cool bikes because (laughs) Ride the Rockies riders have cool bikes. (laughs) So I'm going to add that to the mix on what's my favorite thing about working for Ride the Rockies. So there you go. Excellent. All right. So let's get down to it. We're here today to talk about Ride the Rockies updates. And let's start with registration because it just opened. Um, Erica, how's it going? It's going great. Erica, will you tell the listeners how they can get on registration or how they can learn more about registration? Yeah, so registration just opened and you can go and register right from our website, ridetherockies.com. There are links that can take you to our registration page. That's where you can really look and see what's part of your registration packages, what other products you can add on to your registration. Mm -hmm. We also have Mm -hmm. a really cool program that Pete will go into in a little bit. That's optional if you want to add a day on to your writing. Um, And then it'll also go into our different um, charter company, Summit Cycle Solutions. So all of that information is available at our website, ridetherockies.com. And I happen to know that if you register early, you could get a really nifty water bottle. So that info is also during registration. So for those of you that maybe don't know about Ride the Rockies, it's basically a multi-day bike tour within Colorado. And um, we're going to tell you about some of the, you know, super amazing scenery that you see. But it is not for... um, It's for cyclists who really want to challenge themselves because you're definitely um, doing some elevation and camping. Um, I guess hotels are probably available too. But this is an event that takes place in June. So I would guess, I don't know, maybe Pete can speak to this. Weather in Colorado in June could be beautiful, could be snowy, could be a little bit anything. Yeah, absolutely. It sure can. I, I think last year we got a little bit of everything and <laughs> a full range. I don't know if we we had a little snow on Trail Ridge Road, but we had some rain and hail and sun, sunny days. But 
you, you can get a little of everything in Colorado. One of the things I wanted to say about the water bottle for those riders who have done Ride the Rockies before, um, the water bottle was always something they got with registration. It's not something we've done the last couple of the years, so we are bringing back the route water bottle, and that's going to be free for the first 30 days for people who register. Oh, okay. So if you register after the first 30 days of registration, you can purchase one. But they're awesome water bottles. We just got a few samples in the office. They have, like, they're from Trek, so they're really good quality. Um, But I'm super excited that the water bottles are back because I know that's something people have been asking for. And are they exclusive to this year's ride or... Yes. So they have the all of the towns at the top of the water bottle, and then they have our fun theme along the side and our logo. So it's branded specifically for this year's ride. Oh, cool. So first 30 days, you have the chance to get the water bottle for free, or you can purchase it after that. But is this an event that has a cap on it? Is it going to like, is it the is there a possibility that it will sell out? Yes. So because of how permitting works in the state of Colorado, our event Mm. is capped at 2,500 riders. Um, We haven't sold out uh, in the last several years. If that is something that we think is going to happen for all of the people who've registered in the past with us, we would send an email out to them and say, hey, we're getting close to registration being capped. If you want to register, get in now. Um, so if you really want to add this to your summer item list to do, and you know, you're going to do it, I'd say register early and just make sure you get it. Great point. Um, you know, just, just commit, just do it. Although this is an event that you have to train for. So (laughs) I say that in January. Okay. (laughs) So, um, so how long will registration be open for those who dare to register late? (laughs) Yes. For those who dare to register late. Registration will close at the end of May, Mm, mm -hmm. and then what we'll have is uh, we have an expo the day before the riding actually starts, and that will be held in Steamboat Springs, our start town, Mm -hmm. and that expo, you'll be able to come register if there are any spots left. So we'll Mm. have all that information available on our expo page, in our registration page, we'll have all that info. Perfect. And is it it just like any other event out there where... uh, if you register earlier, the pricing is a little bit better? Yes. So that is something I wanted to talk about today. We do offer early bird pricing for people who register Mm. early, similar to kind of how we do with RAGBRAI, just because that gives us the sooner, closer we get to the ride, the harder it is for us to plan for more people. Mm -hmm. So we do have a set of price tiers that will be in effect for our week-long ride and our day riders. Mm. So our week-long ride is the most popular option that people do. They're lucky enough to be able to take the time off of work, join us for the whole week. That starts out at $550, and then we have our first price increase March 1st, and then we have a price increase on May 1st. So when registration closes at the end of May, we will also have a small price increase right at the expo just because those are kind of last minute people we haven't accounted for them yeah and then if you can only join us for a couple of days because we have some really cool day rides as well Mm. um we start that at a hundred dollars and then our first price increase is may 1st and they just go up to 150. yeah and now erica kind of alluded to it and we're going to get into it way more on the saber episode but we have a lot of really cool day rides on the the ride this year i encourage you to go to ride the rockies.com Look it up if you might be interested. Um, we have a lot of gravel ready for you. We have a lot of different options ready for you. So just check it out if you might be interested. It's a great way to kind of dip your toe into Ride the Rockies if you purchase a day pass. Or like, as Erica said, if you don't have a lot of time off work, you can just, you know, snag a day. So Awesome. And can you maybe give us a brief overview of what registration includes? Of course. So your basic registration package with us will include your wristband for your week. So that means you're going to ride the whole week for us. Um, you get a bike band that, that includes, um, access to our campground. So that means you bring your own tent. Um, 
we, we provide this space that includes um, access to indoor camping for those towns that are going to offer that. It also includes showers. We have a start charging station available. Um, but the biggest thing about registering for an event like this is our SAG services. Mm. So if you are unable to complete the ride for any reason, our support staff is wonderful. They'll pick you up, take you to the next overnight town or take you to the bike mechanic to get your bike fixed. We also have a great team of bike mechanics who will be with us for the week and they, they'll help. They're part of our, the services we offer. And something that's a little bit unique about Colorado that's different, you know, like from Iowa, is a lot of the communities around Colorado, like, have permit requirements. So if I register for Ride the Rockies, do I also have to worry about paying for permits or getting permits complete? No. So that is a great point, Murph. Part of your registration covers all of that. So there are some... Oh, nice. There are some really fun places on this ride that you may not be able to go ride your bike in on a regular basis, and we'll cover all of those fees for those different locations. Sweet. Okay. So what Erica's talking about with registering early, if you know you're going to go, I mean, you're certainly welcome to register anytime, but the point of this registration as early as possible is that it takes a lot of planning. It takes a lot of working with these permits about arranging the proper camping, arranging showers, Um, arranging indoor camping if possible. Um, So as you go through the registration process, you will see a couple bullet points about asking you what kind of camping you're planning. We're not being creepy. We're just trying to plan for you. And then I assume that there will be opportunities to get hotels if you're the type of rider that does not like to camp. Yeah, so that's why you asked that question. Um which you can go in and change at any time. If you're not sure, like, hey, I really want to get hotels, but I ended up going with uh, Camping Elevated, we just kind of want to have a gauge on how many people will be using our services versus Summit Cycle Solutions or a mixture. Um, We just really want to know so we can plan. All right, so let's switch gears a little bit. Um, I got a peek of those jerseys for this year. How cool are they? If I buy one during registration, when am I going to get it? The jerseys are really cool this year. I think Kim, our graphic designer, did an amazing job, as always. So shout out to her. Um, We, unfortunately, won't be giving you the jersey until you get your registration packet. So one of the things we've changed this year is the last few years we have mailed out your packet to you before the ride. But this year where we really have... We normally mail your packet to you for the, before the ride, but this year we are holding packets for pickup only. So that packet will be able, will include your jersey and it will be picked up in Steamboat Springs at the start of the ride. Which kind of is a good thing because I would be so nervous about my my packet getting lost in the mail. So just to alleviate that little bit of anxiety or worry, right? I can just pick up my packet when I get there. Yes. So it'll be great. We have um, some really fun plans for the expo and hoping to make it just uh, more of an experience instead of you just coming, picking up your packet and leaving. Stay, hang out a while. So we'll have some fun things in store for everybody. I feel like that's exciting. It's like a kickoff to the ride and, you know, a little celebration, a little excitement. And like Murph said, you can't forget your packet if you're picking it up at the event. So (laughs) (laughs) win-win. Right. (laughs) And um, if people have questions, like, obviously, you know, we're we're answering a few of those, but everyone will probably have other questions. What can they do if they want to ask maybe a person or a resource that they can go to? So if you have any questions, we have a great website. So that's part of what Pete has been doing is making all of those pages live and ready for the ride. If any of those answers you can't find, on our website. You can always email us at info at ridetherockies.com. We have a really great customer service person who helps us manage the entire cycling division, and she's wonderful. So if Aaron can't help you or anybody else in customer service, then I don't think you can be helped. (laughs) (laughs) 
Shout out to Erin. She's amazing. Okay, let's get let's get to the route. And Pete, I've heard that Prologue is back this year and better than ever. So could you, uh, well, A, explain what Prologue is and then give us a little peek into what riders may experience. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is our 14th Prologue we've done. And the Prologue is basically a two-day kind of mini event before the event. Um, and we really leaned in this year to the experience side of things. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Um, we have a great route planned. Um, so it's on the Saturday, June 8th, and June 9th, this Sunday, um, which is also Expo Day. But it'll be in Steamboat Springs. Um, we have two great hotels picked out. Um, so it's $1,500 total. Um, you get, including in that, um, you get a two-night stay at a hotel. Um, we have a great ride on Sunday morning um, through Steamboat, which is going to be super fun. There's a ton of great riding there, and I'm really excited to be able to show that to some of the riders and some of the riders who joined Prologue. Um, there, there's just a ton of really cool areas to ride in Steamboat. It's Bike Town, USA, so it's like a yeah. great place to be hosting um, the Prologue. But we also are going to go to the hot springs. So that'll be on Saturday when you Ooh. get there. Um, so that should be really fun. Um, we also have a prologue robe. That's really cool. Hoping I get one too. Me too. <laughs> Wait, did you say a prologue robe? A robe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the, for the hot springs. Nice. So when prologue guys get there. Yeah. It's going to be cool. Um, and then we'll do a brewery kind of pub crawl. Um, through Steamboat on Saturday night, which should be a lot of fun. Um, we have some cool places picked out, um, and there'll be food provided and drinks. Um, and then you'll wake up Sunday morning, you'll head for a ride. Um, we have some a few surprises on that ride too, which should be really cool. Can't really can't release that info yet, but it's soon to come. Um, and then we are having a prologue dinner at the Laundry Restaurant, um, and I had the privilege of eating there um when we were on a road trip and it was really good um i i kind of just found it stumbling across restaurants in in steamboat but super excited for that it's going to be a i think a four course or five course meal um first and a seasonal menu so that menu is yet to come but we really just wanted to lean into the experience side on the prologue this year and try to bring something a little different and unique um so i'm excited to have you know that pub crawl and a few other surprises along with the ride um, trying to make it more than just um, riding your bike and and having a dinner trying to make it a, a true experience you'll remember i'm really excited for it and so i just want to back it up real quick when you went to laundry what did you have to eat oh so it's we did a lot of the shared plates which were really good Ooh. we had um this brussels sprout kind of salad thing that was amazing with bacon bits in it I, I basically ate the whole thing <laughs> <laughs> we had some great mac and cheese um oh. and that menu is going to change so that was the winter menu so i was on the sure. phone with the guy from the laundry and he was really excited to have us um and he's going to send over that menu once his chef creates it for the spring so it'll be a brand new menu Mm, um, mm-hmm. so really excited for that and they have a great back patio um we rented out the full place um so really excited for that dinner yeah uh i don't know if i'm gonna be there for it or not but i'm excited anyway because it sounds incredible <laughs> i'll yeah. bring you some food <laughs> okay great <laughs> <laughs> so if you decide if you have the extra time and the extra cash that you decide as a rider that you want to be part of the prologue does that experience then include the actual ride the rockies ride or is that a different so uh, the, it, that'll be an ad, the prologue is an add-on that does not include your registration for the full week got it okay so that's it's more of like a vip experience where you get it's a, probably a smaller crowd i would guess and you get to have all these enhanced experiences exactly yep awesome okay yeah if you're looking for that vip kind of a little different experience of fun before the ride um you should definitely join us because it's going to be a great weekend okay how about actually so uh, maybe i don't have the time i'm not going to be able to do the prologue but now let's get into ride the rockies like what are some unique cool things that we're going to experience in 2024 yeah absolutely um 
Well, we're starting off in Steamboat and ending in Fruta. So two great bike towns Ooh, to start yes. and finish in. Um, so super excited about that. And it's also, we're starting on just the weekend and we're ending on the weekend. So there's time to check out Steamboat and Fruta after the ride, which would be really cool. Um, but apart from that, we're going through some towns um, that we have not overnighted before, which is really cool. Mm. So we're going from Steamboat to Craig. We've overnighted in Craig three times. And then C- Craig to Meeker. Um, and we've never overnighted in Meeker. We've passed through it mm. before. Um, so they're really excited to have us. Um, and then from Meeker to Rangeley as well. So I'm really excited because when we went on the road trip, they're, they're these small um, north northwest Colorado towns. Um, and the writing is really nice. Like when we were driving mm. the roads, um, they were so well paved and quiet and mm. pristine. So like that is a huge aspect of the ride. I, you kind of get caught up in the in the towns and everything, but yeah, the real riding aspect of this ride is gonna be great. Um, nice. so it's it's very it's very unique um, to a lot of a lot of the different ride the Rockies routes, um, which also I like. And these towns are really excited to have us they're doing a ton when we met with them on the road um they were so happy to have us there were so many people in the room wanting to be engaged um so looking forward to that yeah it's so cool to be a part of this ride where it's really a like a a cyclist's ride where the terrain mm-hmm. is cool and the towns are welcoming and we're gonna see some cool sights it's just it's exactly what i would want as a cyclist in a ride so Absolutely. There's a couple of national parks and monuments that we're going to be going through. Ooh. I was pretty pumped about Dinosaur National Park. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. So Dinosaur National Park, um, National Monument, is oh, right you. outside Fruta. And we're going to have um, a great day of riding there. We'll have three different loops through through Dinosaur National Monument. So we'll have a short day, and that'll be 85 miles. So it's, it's not short. <laughs> um <laughs> And we'll have the long route is I, I'm pretty sure 106 miles, um, so that'll that'll be sweet too. Getting a century ride, a century day in there, mm. um, and then we'll have a gravel section, which we're really excited about. And we got to drive a little of that route um, back in October, um, and it was really cool. It's some there's a great long descent um, on that gravel section that looks like a ton of fun. Um, and we'll have awesome aid stations out there. The town of Rangeley is going to really help out with that, um, which is awesome. But the park is really cool. It's definitely a unique part of Colorado. Like, I've lived here for about eight years, and I haven't seen kind of that part of Colorado. So it was really cool to experience that. There's a lot of cool rock formations and everything. Um, so super pumped about that day. That should be a signature day. Yeah, and before we move on, I want to just ask everybody really quick, what's your favorite kind of dinosaur? I can go first. My favorite's a Velociraptor. My favorite is a Triceratops. That's such a hard question. I feel like my favorite my favorite is probably one of those long neck dinosaurs. Oh, Brontosaurus. Brontosaurus. Yeah. yeah. Ah. So that brings me to a very important question that I'm sure listeners are also shouting from their wherever they're listening to this podcast, if you're entering a dinosaur national monument or park, is it, are we going into like a Jurassic park situation where we'll be (laughs) on gravel roads and dinosaurs will be coming at us or is, are they truly extinct? I mean, only the fastest riders are going to make it out plain and simple. (laughs) So you have to train for this event. I told you. (laughs) Well, I guess we'll leave that a mystery. You know, all right, riders, you just got to really train before you head into the dinosaur area. Yeah. So I don't want to get into too much of what the route is like, because like I said, we'll be talking about that with Sabra here down the line. But um, is there anything else that we should be talking about or anything we want to bring up just real quick right now? Um, yeah, I, I would say the the ending day in Fruta um, is going to be really cool. We're going to have a great um finish in downtown fruta mm. and a rock and after party um Ooh. right in civic center park so they're thrilled to have us um so that's great and then overall um our ride headquarters and venues this year are really great um there's a ton of space um they're really excited to have us and not only that everything's going to be centralized um so going and 
on this road trip and visiting all the venues. I was just super pumped about that. Yeah. Um, I know that was a bit of a hiccup last year. Um, so it's nice to be able to provide our riders with everything they need um, right in one place. So Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It's definitely been a focus and it's really paying off as we've been planning early and often. So, yep. um, so we have all this, we have this cool ride. We have these cool events. And like I've been saying over and over again, you got to train. Um, and with that, we have a, Pete has worked really hard to launch this new thing called the ambassador program. Uh, so why Ooh. don't you tell us a little bit more about what that is and what it might be like? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited about that. That was a great um, kind of group idea. Um, and I just kind of ran with it. Um, so this year we'll be doing an ambassador program and basically we're looking for pe- like four to five people who are wanting to be involved with ride the Rockies at a higher level. Um, what that'll look like. They'll be posting on social media, some training, some packing tips, um, fun things like that, mm-hmm. um, which is really important for our riders too, because like, like we've said, you, you do have to train yeah. uh, for this one. You can't just hop on the bike and go out yeah. there. Um, and it also gives us, you know, uh, some people points of contact basically. Um, and it, it allows our riders to connect with actual people doing the event, which I think is really cool. Um, and they'll be able to maybe not reach out, but our, those ambassadors will be able to, Help, help those riders clear any questions, um, help them with training and packing and all kind of tips for Ride the Rockies. Yeah. Um, we're looking for people who are big cyclists wanting to be involved. And not only that, but these ambassadors will also um, have some uh, branded merchandise mm. during the mm. event. Um, so throughout the week, you'll be able to see them, talk to them. Um, I'll be kind of helping the ambassadors leading up to that, answering any questions for them. So if this sounds like you and sounds like you want to be a part of something like this, that'd be really great. And we encourage you to check out the ambassador page um, on ridetherockies.com. And there's a link there to apply. Um, it's not a full job application, so don't be scared. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we're really excited. About yeah, that. I mean, that's cool. Ride the Rockies is a ride like no other. So we need experts to help us. Um, explain what it's like, explain what to expect and, um, just help the newbies get ready or people, you know, just as a reminder for people who've done it a bunch of times. So, um, I'm just so excited to see where you take the program and where your ambassadors go as well. Yeah, I'm thrilled for it. I also think it's cool to have an ambassador program just because you have, you know, these are the people that are actually riding and they are a direct line of communication to you guys that are running the show yeah Yeah, they're gonna be they're really gonna be out there they're really gonna be riding and so the people that help you prepare for the ride are gonna be uh riding it out there with you so i'm really excited for it i think this ride um and this route is gonna bring a lot of uniqueness to um the event and that's really what the essence of ride the rockies is it's a super unique um cool event and all the towns are super excited to have us. Um, the venues look great, and the route looks even better. Um, and the riding is going to be great. There's the roads. I mean, I, I've said it again. I've said it once, but they're really nice. Um, they're quiet, too. Um, they're not crowded. You'll be riding in pristine conditions. So It's so exciting. I love it. I'm, I'm so excited. Yeah. So if you know you want to ride Ride the Rockies, if you think you want to ride Ride the Rockies, you can find it all on ridetherockies.com. And that's also where you're going to go if you're uh, ready to register. And I hope you are. Thank you so much, Erica and Pete, for taking the time to talk to us. And uh, we are, well, I, I'll speak for myself, Andrea, but I am always pumped to come to Colorado in June to hang out with you guys. Oh, heck yes. I can't wait. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, thanks, Murph and AP. It's time for a training tip. Staying properly hydrated is crucial during cycling training. Here are some tips to help you keep up on your hydration while cycling. Drink water regularly by sipping throughout your ride rather than waiting until you feel thirsty. A very general rule is to aim for 16 to 20 ounces per hour while riding. 
If you don't feel comfortable grabbing your water bottle while you're pedaling, use the winter months to practice indoors. And if your water bottle is not within reach, head to your local bike shop. They'll help you get that set up. During longer rides or in hot conditions, consider using an electrolyte drink like Gatorade or Powerade or electrolyte tabs like Noon that you can add to your water. Another great tip is to prehydrate. Start increasing your water intake a few hours before you ride. If you can handle it, maybe ease up on the caffeine before you ride as well. While you're on your ride, be aware of possible signs of dehydration. The biggest one, if your urine is super dark or you're not peeing at all, you need to drastically increase your water intake. And of course you should adjust your fluid intake based on factors like weather, time of day, what you've been eating, and the intensity of your ride. The more intense these factors are, the more you should be drinking. After you're done riding, keep on drinking to replace what you've sweated out. And alcohol doesn't really count. Eat foods with high water content too. And if you plan to ride again the next day, do some extra prehydrating so you can start off on the right foot. Tomorrow you will think today you. Of course, everyone's needs are different, so these are just general guidelines. Now back to the show. Well, listeners, that is it for this week. We both want to thank you for tuning in to listen to the Just Go Bike podcast. And if you'd like to contact us with a comment about the podcast, or maybe you have a topic in mind, you can reach us at justgobikepodcast at gmail.com, or you can also follow us on social media at Just Go Bike on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast, especially if you're a fan. And if you have any extra time, pop on over to the Morphology Podcast for more bike adventure interviews. All right, that's a wrap. We'll be back next week. Until then, just just go bike. bike!